We're back, episode number three of the kind of mini series we've done on the Mindspreneur podcast. They're all going to interlink, so if you haven't watched the first two of this series, we call them the foundations, go and check out the link in the description below to understand the vision, where you're trying to get to, then you understand the why, and this episode is going to be on how you actually get there. If you have a vision of somewhere you want to go, let's say you want to go on holiday to some beautiful destination, and you're like, I want to go to the Bahamas. The reason why is because I love the Caribbeans, I love the blue ocean, I love that country. And I say to you, what's your plan to get there? and you say, yeah, I'm just gonna leave my house and start walking, you're gonna struggle to get to the Bahamas, right? But if you say, I'm gonna book my Uber to the airport, at the airport I have a flight book, which is gonna take me to the Bahamas. Once I get there, I'm gonna book another Uber to the hotel. You then have a plan, right? But so many people, I think in life, in any area, it's the simple things that people don't apply that will fuck them up, right? Let's say in fitness, for example, I know for myself, when I didn't have a plan on how to work out, I would go in there and just wing it, and it would just be very inconsistent. As soon as I got a plan together and I understood how many reps to be doing, how many sets, what exercises I need to do. It's effortless for me to do. I just follow the plan. But when I didn't know that, it would be going in there, confusion, what am I doing? I don't know. Overwhelm. And so many people, obviously, my entrepreneur, we help entrepreneurs, right? We ask them, what's your plan? And so many people don't know it. So I'll give you an example, right? When I was coaching people on agency specifically, we'll talk about one component of the plan and then break it down. So if you talk about outreach, we say to people, if you want to get in contact with businesses, let's say you wanted to reach out to, let's say 20 a day. So you're looking at 100 a week, right? Five days a week. So that's going to be 400 a month. Over three months, you're looking at 1,200 emails sent. All right, let's say that's the example. So let's say out of those 1,200 people, you speak to 2% of them, right? Then that's going to be what? 30 meetings booked in if my maths is correct. 24. 24. 24, there we go. Got it. 24 meetings booked in. Let's say you close at 25%. One four, which is six. There we go. You're going to get to six meetings closed if you charge them 2K each, you're making 12 grand a month, right? But you can see how it's just a plan broken down. It's very simple. It's numbers, it's data, right? My biggest mistake in business would be always looking at emotion. How do I feel? I don't feel like this is working. For someone like Vash who didn't do that and just followed the plan, it's very logical. Okay, let me send these messages today. It's going to book me in this amount of meetings. But that's one component of a plan. You can see how when you break it down, just like if you're going to get an Uber, and then you're going to get on the aeroplane, and then you're going to get another Uber. It's very simple. I would say there's three components of the plan me and Vash teach. So if you want to touch on those three there, but I just wanted to kind of explain how you take something that's a big thing and you chunk it down. Yeah. And it's crucial because even when I set the vision for the very first time, it's almost where do I start? Where do I right? begin? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And where you don't know where to begin or where to start, you will basically usually do nothing or you will do low priorities tasks. And so many entrepreneurs we speak with, they might not do the tasks that grow the business, they just do tasks to feel productive. It could be mm. creating the best looking website even though nobody's visiting the website or they are creating crazy SOP systems even though they don't have any team members. They watch thousands and thousands of YouTube videos but never taking any actions that will actually get them closer to their destination. They don't know where to start or they're afraid of it so they kind of go what seems easy or what's comfortable. So we call it the Manchapreneur Plan. What Manchapreneur Plan consists of are only three things that we do daily. Let's now standardize it because I know multiple people are watching it. You could be in the agency space, you could be coach, you could be multi-level marketing, you could be crypto, forex, you could be e-commerce, you could be nine to five worker thinking of starting a business, whoever you are. Let's standardize entrepreneur plan so you can apply it to your own vision. First is always, what is the one thing I can do to get more business or get myself in front of the people that actually want my service or product? Let's break it down for a few industries. Let's take the agency model. You are having marketing agency, you're doing Facebook ads for e-commerce businesses. Cool. Who are the ideal customers? This type of e-commerce business. Task number one is how to get in front of these people. But not just say, I will get in front of them. How many per day? My example. When I started coaching with John, John told me, Vash, you actually want to go after e-commerce businesses, right? I said, yes. In my point of view, what would work best would be personalized videos. And I resonated with it. I said, I would be doing 10 a day. What I did every single day, I would do 10 videos. And what happens is in 90 days, which is usually the time frame we choose for the entrepreneur plan, is I did 900 personalized videos. Just let it sink in. How many people would record 900 videos? Not just random videos, personalized to the business. And I did it for 600 
30 videos without any external result. So I didn't book a client, nobody paid me. I just sit down every day to do one of my free tasks, which was record 10 videos. But even though I didn't have any monetary reward for it yet, I knew my English is getting better. Yeah, yeah, I knew yeah, I'm yeah, getting yeah, yeah. better speaking at camera. I'm getting more data point to see what works, what doesn't work. Again, going back to the episode before, the reason why. Yes. You had, you, it wasn't oh, such an, a huge concept to talk about, sorry to interrupt you, but huh? detaching from the outcome. Yes. But we can touch on that in a moment. Exactly, as you said, it, I was doing it because I even enjoy that. I wasn't like dragging myself, oh, I need to record 10 videos. It was like, okay, let's go. And I know I'm sending video to Julie. So I'll be, yes, Julie, I'm going to help you. And I will create amazing video. And as I got better, better and better, I signed up multiple clients after day 63. Within 90 days, I hit from zero, my business doing zero to making $10,000 a month. All of a sudden I did the math and each video made me more than $10. You yeah. can reverse it back. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not just, oh, I sent 300 or 600 videos yeah. or emails for nothing. No, each video made me more than $10. <laughs> and even if you don't get a specific monetary return, yeah. there's always a lesson involved. Yeah. You can't connect the dots looking forward, you can connect them looking back. 100%. But again, I think one thing I noticed with Vash, right, he kept it very simple. I was doing similar the loom videos getting meetings booked but I decided to change it right and these are lessons again you learn on your journey but I think when you have a plan right keep it simple and again people have this this idea and this was me especially right oh let me change the plan keep it simple keep it consistent if it's not working base that off of data and logic, not emotion and feelings. And that's what I would do. I'd be like, I don't feel like this is working, right? And I would change stuff. It's the worst way, especially in business or any area of your life. Let's say you're going to the gym and you're like, I don't feel like this is working. It's mm. like, but have you tracked if your strength has gone up? Have you tracked your weight? Because if you don't understand the data around it, you're making an emotional decision. Mm. So I think that's such a key point there is that keep it simple and a huge concept when we look at the plan, the attach from the outcome. You mentioned it very well, which is basically this guys. Just imagine if after sending 620 videos, day 62, I would say, John, I feel this is not working. John, I want a refund on your coaching. This is simply not working. I wouldn't be sitting here and that's the scariest part. Yeah, bro. You might be one day away, one email away, one meeting away. So just keep going with the plan. And first us, as I said, it, it's a task that grows your business. If you're in a real estate wanting to get new listings, maybe you are sending emails, you're cold calling, you're knocking on the doors. This is your task. Think of your business model you are in and think, what task can yeah, I do yeah, yeah, to yeah. get more business, to get in front of my ideal customers? This is not going to be done by watching you to action and action, action specific action step you're gonna do it depends on the niche right so for let's say you're doing a coaching business or agency it could be very specific actionable step maybe you're on e-commerce and you can't do an actionable step like oh, I need to go out there and do a amount of cold calls it's, it might be a bit different but there's always gonna be something yeah. you can do that will grow your business maybe it's you're gonna go and speak to a e-commerce entrepreneur every day to understand something there's always that actionable yeah. step you could do that will progress you further right 100% and that's task number one on the mind entrepreneur plan figure out what is the one task you can do to actually grow the business and put specific number this number should challenge you 10 videos at the beginning wasn't easy but it shouldn't be so constraining that if you need to catch a flight or you have busy a day that you can't complete it so it can't be I will do 100 videos because that's that's what most people do they said this huge thing i will start five new habits in a day they no. do it for a week they give up it's more about the consistency over intensity over right? intensity yeah so that's the task number one task number two you will learn valuable skill that is going to help you get again closer to your vision for me when i started it was sales why if i'm sending video and the prospect books a call with me and i don't know how to sell it doesn't matter how many meetings i get i'm not going to get to my vision so for me the valuable skill was sales for some of our students we have a course called Mind Systems. For them, they study the course because the skills we are teaching them are invaluable. Yes. I allocated 45 minutes. Why? Every single day I can study 45 minutes, even when I have busy day. But on days when, let's say, I had more time, I would go over it. It's not limited. Oh, 45 minutes, I'm done. If I knew, man, I want to really master it, I would go two, three, four hours. But second task is one valuable skill you will learn every single day for 45 minutes. 
business. Ask yourself, what can I do to grow my business? Same with me, right? I was like, hmm, what can I do to grow my business? And this is when I had my first 10K month and I was like, no, the first 15K month and I was like, cool, I'm gonna invest in myself. And I invested in a guy to teach me sales because I knew that would be the thing that would level me up. I went relentless and studying sales every day, every day, every day. And again, this is how the universe unfolds. If I didn't do this and get good at sales, when me and Vash had our initial sales call, right? When Vash came to speak to me about coaching, there's no way I would have closed him because I wouldn't have had the skill set mm. to be able to do that. Going back to when you have your vision and your reason why, you just do the things that you know your intuition is telling you to do. So it's like, John, master sales. So I go and do that and it allowed me to get Vash to move forward with me, again, leading us to where we are now. Sometimes people, they deny the thing they know they need to do. Like they have this intuition, like you watching it right now, I'll ask you, is there something you know you need to do that's gonna take your life to the next level? Like I said on the previous podcast, I knew that discipline was the thing I needed to master. So I got to work and that acted on it, right? When we both realized sales is the thing that's gonna allow us to propel our business, no questions asked, we mastered that skill set. Yeah. They would be learning it every day. And I remember even times where I didn't feel good, I didn't feel like doing it, but I still studied sales. And I remember one time we was in Cartagena, right? And I was like, oh, I really don't want to study sales. So I was lying on my bed watching this YouTube video on sales and it was nuggets. And I remember there were so many lessons in there that helped me tremendously with sales. So especially on the days you don't feel like it, still get it done, still show up. 100% and really think what could be the, the skill because once I basically achieved the initial goal, I started to have team members in place. So for me, the skill of sales shifted to skill of leadership, you know, because as I level up and I said bigger vision that vision almost didn't require sales anymore because yeah, I had yeah, a yeah. salesperson in place it was more about okay what's next valuable skill to achieve the vision I said it was leadership and again I didn't start to dabble like let me read a 10 minute book I really started to study people observe them then applied in my own business to master the same was with sales guys I was going to gym listening my script in my ears I was on an airplane studying sales in my ears I would go in front of mirror every single day and for at least 30 minutes I would speak the script out loud yeah. we would role play every single week even a year after our coaching to get better at sales mm -hmm. I get obsessed with the skill if let's say you are copywriter and that's a skill you know will get you to the next level if you improve it master it double down find the best person find the right. best resources and learn exactly bro and again it's that Going back to the reason why, when you know your reason why, you don't make excuses, you, you don't dabble, you go all in. Similar to what I was saying on the previous one, going to the gym, how did I not miss for one year? Because I was committed to it. Again, commitment, are you interested or committed? And that's when you follow through. I know when Vash is talking now, I'm thinking, there's times in my life where I've started learning something, I haven't followed through, I wasn't truly committed to it, I didn't link the reasons why. When you know that it's gonna bring you something, when I was like, sales, this is gonna allow me to change my life. We committed to that, everything changed from there, right? Similar to when we launch my entrepreneur even to this day studying mindset every single day relentlessly we still do this today and that's how we're able to grow our coaching company some people might look at it and go how do they grow it so well we're good at what we do which leads to the belief deserve to be the people that can help and teach other people right when we realize mm, mastering our mindset we want to teach people that i know i'm worthy to teach that because i've put in so many repetitions mm -hmm. in that specific area now the third step right we say to people when it comes to growing your business three simple steps right market your service get it seen by the potential prospects who would be interested in it second thing is learn a skill set that will help you and the third one there's two things here right get good at understanding the service you'll provide me and vash are mindset coaches so we get good at that we then are able to teach that to people and if you're not good at your service right if you don't have conviction in what you're selling chances are you're not going to sell it as well because we have such conviction in what we do we have no problem selling it so i think that's one component of it is learning about your service right most importantly is working on your mindset and specifically visualizing this should be a non-negotiable action and the reason why when you go after your goals right you have the vision you see it in your mind you're like wow i'm going to accomplish this you have two choices one is you go out there go into the physical world and you go, okay cool i need to overcome this challenge in my life i know i procrastinate i know i don't focus right and then you go to sit down at your desk and you get distracted but the other one is you see in your mind being focused you've got on your internal vision i am focused and you're reading over that and you're seeing that in your mind you're visualizing that then as the day comes about it's going to be easier for you to apply that because your subconscious mind does not understand the difference between what you imagine and what is real it does not understand the difference do an ex exercise right now close your eyes watching this right close your eyes 
and imagine you're standing at the top of a skyscraper. You really feel that. Your toes are over the edge and you could easily fall off. You feel like you're already there because your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference. So when you take that same context there and apply that to things you need to overcome in your life, it shifts your beliefs, right? And your brain starts to think, oh, I can do this. I've done it before. This is who I am. That resistance that you have is simply because it's unknown. It's not familiar to you. But when you replay it again and again in your mind, it becomes familiar and it becomes known. So then when you go to do the thing, it's like, well, let's go. So the more you pl role play that in your mind, the easier it is for you to follow through on it. I would say that's probably one of the biggest things we both do is visualizing our goals, seeing the attainment of the goal, the reality of that already done. So it shifts that belief. But then again, who I need to be and seeing that the action steps you go through to get there. But what would you say then? So you got the specific action step you're going to do, right? You've got the skill set you're going to learn. Let's say you're doing e-commerce. Would you say learn about e-commerce and get really good at it as well? And then the visualization. For me, the second task was sales. If I'm, let's say, e-commerce, maybe you don't need to learn much about that much about sales, but about e-commerce. So the second skill might be e-commerce. Yeah, yeah, good point. Because for me, guys, this is how it was. We call it 90 day challenge. I did 10 looms a day, 10 videos a day, 45 minutes sales minimum, and I did 15 minute visualization and we are huge on visualization and i will go a little bit deeper because now in our mentorship or even our mind system scores we have guided visualization we record every friday for our mentorship we guide live these people why because we believe so much in visualization because it's evidence. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have evidence that you play tennis for the past five years. If I say, hey, John, let's play tennis, you wouldn't say, oh, I don't know how to play because you have so much evidence. You played, you know you're good. But as John said, you, your brain doesn't know the difference between what you visualize and what is really yeah. happening. If you visualize being focused or already having the goal you have in mind, all of a sudden to brain, it's I've already achieved that. I already have evidence I can do it. Mm. So let me give you an example. I'm from Czech Republic. The average wage is like $1,000. So for me, the goal $10,000 seems like, whoa, and some executive in a bank could earn. Like, who am I to achieve that? Especially with my beliefs about money, scarcity, all of the stuff. That's where I started. So I could never achieve the 10K if I believe 2K is too much money. I wanted to charge $2,000 for my service, but I thought nobody's going to pay that. So it wouldn't yeah, yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. The so I would, is gonna stop that. Exactly. So I would visualize every single day a few scenes. I call it scenes. One of them was to increase my belief it's possible. I would see myself waking up, going to my phone, seeing Stripe account, seeing their $10,000, running to my kitchen and shouting, mom, dad, I've done it and we celebrate it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I did it over and over and over and over and over and over again. And I remember a day when I woke up and I felt it's already done. Even though I didn't have the money that's yet. That's it, that's it, that's but it. I felt it's done. But that's the key. Because again, when you feel like it's already done, you don't have that resistance. And this is the key thing as well, guys. I said to my friend, he wants to achieve this vision he has, right? And he had been taking action, starting, stopping, starting, stopping, starting, stopping, right? Bearing in mind, this guy's a boxer, athlete, disciplined, consistent. Most people don't want to train twice a day, get punched in the face. Right? Would you say that guy's disciplined? Yes. Would you say he's consistent? Yes. He's in great shape, all of that stuff. When I asked him about his business, I said, hey, how's it going? I need to be more consistent and disciplined. I said, you know, you don't. You don't need to be more consistent and disciplined. I said, what do you truly believe about your business. So what do you believe about what you're doing? Do you believe it's going to work out? No. No, I don't believe it's going to work out. Okay, why? Well, I don't know if it's going to work. Mm. I said, how's that going to make you feel? Oh, disheartened. Mm. Be, do, and have. You can do more and more and more, but if you don't believe it's going to work, your efforts are going to be so low. Gain clarity on the vision. The simple reason why you must do this is so your brain can start to believe that this can be achieved. Going back to the analogy of standing at the top of a skyscraper, your brain starts to believe you are there. Most people don't believe in what they're doing. They can't see that end finished product. So they think, what's the point? Why am I even trying to do this? For me and Vash right now, right? We have so much belief in my entrepreneur and where we're going to get it to that it's not even questionable. Should we launch a podcast? Yeah, let's do it. Because we know like it's going to get us here. If at any moment me and Vash were like, I don't know, man. I don't know if this is going to work. We would not be doing the podcast most likely, mm -hmm. right? We wouldn't be filming six in one day. The point is, guys, your beliefs are so 
fucking powerful. I know you hear this common quote, believe, achieve, but it's so true. Because if you don't believe it, right, your brain has two main roles. One is to keep you safe and avoid danger. The second one is to conserve energy. So why would my brain move towards a goal that I don't believe is gonna work? It's gonna make me feel disheartened. A lot of effort, right? Waste of effort. Maybe my family are gonna laugh at me. My friends might laugh at me, which is embarrassment, which again is rejection, which again is danger and fear, which again is something the brain wants to avoid. Why is my brain gonna do that? It's gonna say, fuck it. Let's go and watch Netflix. Let's go on Instagram. But when you envision the, the, the goal already done and it's already done in your mind, you start to believe that you're already halfway there. It becomes a second part like we mentioned before, but when you're visualizing overseeing, we need to do a whole, po a whole podcast yeah. of visualizing, but I'm when you're saying. going over that and you're like, I see this vision. I see my Stripe account with a certain amount of money. I see me and Vash on stage with thousands of people in a room coming to see us speak. We are like, yeah, it's already done. Then we need to visualize who I need to be. I see myself sitting at my desk feeling resistance, overwhelmed, confused, leaning into it, overcoming that. Right? I see myself wanting to put out a podcast and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can do it. I see myself leaning into that, overcoming those beliefs and fears, feeling that as if it's already done. And what you will find is your subconscious mind starts to believe that that's true. It starts to remove all that resistance that you have that you thought was there. Fear is false evidence appearing real, right? False evidence appearing real. So many people will speak to you, Vash, and we ask them, what do you fear? And they know their fears like that. Mm. And I ask them, what evidence do you have to back that up? Mm. Some guy said to me the other day, I fear getting rejected on a sales call. I said, have you ever been rejected on a sales call? No. <laughs> so people's fears are so crystal clear, they visualize that. That's what they see in their mind again and again and again. I think we should go off the visualizing topic. We should make another podcast on that. Yeah, we'll do, we do another podcast, yeah. stay tuned, because for to me, it's a fast track, guys. That's all I can say because I have, let's say, two sales goals a week, let's just say. So I can practice sales eight times a month or I can yeah. close my eyes and see practice it 10 times a day. I will develop my skill much faster than the person who only relies on the physical experience of having a sales call. So let's wrap it up here. We call it the Manchapreneur Plan, which is three actions. If you want to do four of one, that's fine. But three should be amazing because people laugh at me, guys. They laugh at me like, how oh, you think you will build a business? It's three tasks studying 45 minutes and 10 videos and visualizing no get to the real world but what happened is 90 days later of doing only these three tasks everything else for me was bonus once there came a time to do a website i did it after i done my three, three tasks. tasks again it's it's that simplicity aspect guys you know people try to complicate it but you look at business again what is it marketing sales and then delivering the yeah. service or product so when you think about that guys whatever you're trying to do how can i get more eyeballs in my business, market. What are we doing now? Podcast, marketing. How do we sell this? Well, we send people to our website, they book in a call, they buy one of our products, cool. How do we deliver the service through our coaching calls, etc., etc. It's literally that, but if you're missing one of those, right? If you're missing marketing, you're not gonna get leads. If you don't have the skill set that's gonna either one, let's say sell those guys and get them into your program or better that, so maybe leadership, yeah. for example, whatever it might be, becoming better mindset coaches, that's gonna impact the selling part of the company. And then lastly is the mindset part. If your mindset's not on point, most importantly, you're done, you're done. It's gonna be a lot harder for you to get to that next level. So I think again, they all link together and they all kind of tie in together. You keep it simple and it compounds. And it's beautiful because I see so many people on the internet, they overcomplicate it, making oh, it seem it's impossible to achieve that. Yeah, and don't get me started on, on fucking gurus out there, right? You see so many people, you go onto your YouTube channel, you go onto your Facebook page, there's these guys that tell you, this is the secret way to grow your business, right? This is the only way to do it. This is where people get very confused. There is a difference between a strategy, right? And a tactic. Let me give you an example. A strategy for growing a business would be marketing, okay? Let's say marketing through video content. The tactic is a podcast. You see what I'm trying to say, guys? The strategy is marketing on social media. The tactic is a podcast. And there is multiple tactics. It could be short short video content. Yeah, exactly. It could be high quality. It could be organic marketing. Yeah, it could be organic marketing. It could be TikTok. It could be Instagram. It could yeah. be Facebook. There's so many ways, but the thing is they all work. Let's say coaching or the agency space, right? People, be, LinkedIn is the best way to get leads okay e email is the best way to get leads okay let me see what these guys sell oh he sells linkedin oh, oh he sells email oh that's why he's promoting that because he's selling it right the point is this guys pick a strategy right and stick with the strategy the tactic can change within that 
again, based off of data, but let's say you're gonna pick emails, right? Cold emails to grow your business. That's the strategy. The tactic could be you use a Loom video. The tactic could be you personalize the first line, right? You can see how the tactic will change, but where people get caught up is they keep changing the strategy and then they keep tweaking the tactic. That's what's gonna confuse you. So when you're seeing these guys online trying to tell you the best method and this is the tactic and then you try it and it doesn't fucking lead you anywhere and then you go back and chase another one and then you chase another one. This is where I was, LinkedIn, Instagram, emails, the, 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 all of them, they are all going to work. And I think this is where people get so caught up. It's like in the, in the gym, for example, keto diet, intermittent fasting, you've got high carb diets, you've got hypertrophy training, you've got all of these different ways to get in shape and this and this and this. Pick one, simplify it and stick with it. And this is where people fuck themselves because it's not the external thing that's slowing you down, it's your internal feelings you have toward yourself. When you start progressing, you think, nope, this isn't who I am. I don't deserve this. This isn't normal to me. And you fucking sabotage yourself. And then you blame it on the external thing. And I'm talking from very a lot of experience in the past I would blame it on like some external thing it was just me not feeling good enough not feeling worthy of that so I would sabotage it right but again it's like keep it fucking simple 100% and let me tell you the benefits of this so of my first launch of dinner plan which was 90 days right so first I became really good at camera I improved my English massively I became really 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 good at sales I started believing my goals are possible confidence and this is huge guys my confidence went through the roof why for a whole 90 days I said I will do something and I did Stuck it. To it what most people have zero confidence or very low confidence is because they say next day I go to gym they don't they mm. say I will start sending emails they don't they said they will start eating healthy they don't and therefore they stop trusting them it's like if I went let's say traveling with John and I said John I will meet you on Tuesday 2 p.m. and I don't show up I would say sorry bro I couldn't make it let's make it a Wednesday right. 2 p.m. I don't show up after a few days John be I can't trust this guy yeah, yeah you yeah. know it's literal guys it, oh. sometimes again things are so simple to explain if I do things to Vash that are not nice. I don't show up when I say I'm gonna meet up. I constantly, we go out for meals, I don't pay. I constantly tell him he doesn't look good today. The relationship is not gonna be a good one. We're probably not going to be friends. <laughs> now, if I tell Vash, you're crushing it. If I pay for meals, if I appreciate him, the relationship's gonna grow. But most people don't have a relationship with themselves. This is why they fail. You wonder why you're not progressing because you don't even respect yourself. And that's why you don't stay consistent. Because if you love yourself, think about this guys, if you truly love yourself and have respect for yourself would you miss the gym no would you miss doing your business goals no because you respect yourself you wouldn't do it to a friend but you do it to yourself you have this internal chatter that's horrendous and bringing you down how you think determines how you feel how you feel determines how you act this is why people sabotage because they think something which makes them feel something so they act in alignment with that this proves to me if somebody's not being consistent the thoughts against themselves are not serving them. they have these limiting thoughts right that don't serve them that make them feel bad that make them act in that way when you start to change the thoughts feelings change the actions change ask yourself this if you had more confidence in your life would you achieve your vision faster would you live better life very likely yes you know confidence is great not being arrogant i mean confident just knowing mm. yes i can do it i will find a way or i will make one and then have happens as a byproduct of completing this 90 day challenge. I want you to now go back to your vision, your why, ask yourself this, okay, what is one action I can start doing today to get myself in front of my ideal customers. That's your first task. How many of them I will do? If it's cold calls, how many? If it's emails, how many? If you will knock on doors, how many? Second is, okay, which skill would get me there faster? Leadership, sales, something about your service, communication, NLP, what is it? Hmm. And then third task, visualize. As simple as that. I want you to create a scene, write down a scene that will confirm to you that you already live your dream life. Are you in your dream apartment? Are you driving your dream car? Are you next to your beautiful girl let's say going traveling together what is it mm -hmm. create a scene and visualize it every day and then commit not just yeah i will give it a shot no if you want to give it a shot to stop this video leave because this yeah, is not bro. for you because it's going to harm you if you don't complete it as you're saying i just feel the pain in my past when i started these 90 day challenges i wouldn't complete them sometimes right it just damages you it's crazy to say but like most of you watching this would do nothing with this information and you're going to go back to your life and you're going to look back in a few weeks and go why am i still in the same position again because you're gaining this valuable information information and you're doing nothing with it this is the thing you guys need to understand you need to know the vision the reason why are you interested or committed and if you can't answer that honestly and say i am committed that's the first problem you need to overcome because if you can't commit there will be excuses made there will be sabotage that will happen and you will stop taking the actions you know you need to do if you 
apply these three steps, right? Do an action to grow your business, you're learning a, uh, or amazing skill set, and on top of that, you're working on your mindset every day for 90 days. I have not seen anybody do this, right, for 90 days, every day, and not transform their life. I have, n I have yet to see that. It's something me and Vash still do to this day, consistently improving and finding challenges we set for ourselves, and then we work on that, and every time something beneficial comes from it. Yeah, we just believe in you guys, so go and apply it. You can do it if I could do it, if John could do it, you can do it too. 100%. And just commit 90 days. Most people we've go around the day 60, 70, 80, all of a sudden, the progress seems small and then boom, boom. They takes go off. to the it, moon. It takes off. It's like the universe will surprise yeah. you. How many times have we had something that's just like, you couldn't predict it? Never. Sometimes it's like the universe will just present you with it again because you start to feel, I am deserving of this. Something has to come from mm. this, right? We've had people where nothing happens, but day 90, takes off. It's happened to myself, happened to Vash. I've yet to see somebody do the 90 day challenge to completion and not gain massive benefits from it. So are you interested or committed? That's the question. If you want to know more about this and specifics, right? Go to our website. We've got a lot of resources on there. We've got programs and stuff that will help you master your visions, your reasons why, your plan of action in a lot more detail with very well put together um, presentations that break it down in more detail. There's actionable steps on there. There's action sheets, all of that good stuff there. 